Welcome to another broadcast of The Soul of the Everyman on the Artist First Radio Network. All past shows are archived. You can find them in podcast form at artistfirst.com. And now here they are, Michael and Margaret Lines. <laughs> Thank you very much, Z-Man. And here we are. Here we are. <laughs> we are coming to you from the fifth dimension. <laughs> <laughs> not, not, not just an R&B group from the 60s. <laughs> Maybe they weren't R&B. What were they? Fusion rock? Contemporary soul? Anyway, they were awesome. Um, but not those guys. And uh, the moon is not in the seventh house, and Jupiter has not aligned. Actually, maybe Jupiter is aligned with Mars again. But none of those things matter. We are co- we are coming to you to talk to you about the fifth dimension. Yes, we are. Fran, have you heard about the fifth dimension? <laughs> 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 I'm here to tell you about the fifth dimension. Um, well, well, it, maybe we're not. Maybe we're not talking about a dimension, but we are talking about something very, very uh, sort of sort of occurred to us the other day. Something very interesting, um, because I guess, I guess we can say that everybody knows about the three dimensions that we normally talk about, you know, space, and then we all uh, have heard of and probably sort of understand the, the concept of one other dimension being time. And <clears throat> what occurred to us the other day is that. Although time and, and space-time, which is what we, we kind of refer to it now as, uh, the, the, the universe that we live in is the same really for everyone. And by that I mean that it all kind of marches on at one second per second all the time. We are, we are constantly all moving forward through time. And so the... Our, our traversal through life from, let's say, the time we, we uh, are incarnated out of spirit into the flesh until we leave it again is, is really the same as far as the, from the universal's point of view. It's the same for everyone. All of us are kind of moving forward at one second per second. What is different, and I think this is true, and we almost look at it as, as a truism, and you, and you, you kind of discount it, is that everybody's experience of that same space-time moving forward is unique and different. And, and, I, and I draw the line right there. The bright line is experience. And the key is that, that experience has two sides to it. There are the things that happen, and there are what you do about it or how you react to it or what you decide to do next. And the important interface between those two things is the will, is, is what we call free will or choice. Uh, and in, in your unique point of view and in your choices, our postulate is, is that you are in the fifth dimension. You're, you're at right angles to what's actually happening in space-time. And so the, the concept, the, the bizarre out there concept for tonight is that the fifth dimension is the dimension of experience, the dimension of uh, through which we all are changed and through which we retain those changes to the extent that we retain those changes, even though we're all moving forward at the same rate, none of us, each one of us has a unique experience. Even shared experiences are unique. You, you, You know, you, when you experience the world, you experience it from a singular point of view, always. And you are changed both in through your choices and through the events, even though the events are perhaps universal events, uh, such as time itself, which is a universal event that we all experience. It changes you in a unique way. Right. So, so when something unique happens amongst the other four dimensions, which basically are the same. We all experience space in the same way. We all experience time in the same way. But we, we never experience our, our, our... We don't have identical experiences regardless. So those things exist in a, in a what we're going to call an, a right-angle dimension. And the, the way you access that dimension is through choice, because if you think of everything in the world and everything in the universe that doesn't have choice, everything that exists, um, you know, that it doesn't have volition, 
is experiencing the same universe, but in a way that is not uh, in the fifth dimension. It's really just a space-time dimension. They're aging, they're changing, they're certainly um, experiencing the same one second per second universe that the rest of us are. But you can't say to a tree, how was your day? <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, and expect it to, to reply. You know, you can argue semantics. Well, the tree has experiences too, but not really. The tree has events which happen to it, and it has certainly tropisms. It wants to grow. It wants to exist. It, it wants to live. It acts in, in ways to preserve its own life. But we can't say that the, the, the same degree of experience is held by uh, certainly a rock or a non-living thing and you know now we can go. We can get bound up in all what's life and all. Let's just let's just draw a bright line that that the the currency of the fifth dimension is 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 will and choice, and the results of the fifth dimension are experience and and the uniqueness of a point of view. True. So if you define. Because usually when you're looking at dimensions and you're just looking at a grid work, you have uh, your typical L pattern, which is, you know, the length and width, and then you go into depth. And so that's your typical three dimensions. And each one of those lines is perpendicular to the others. So the fourth dimension, which we say is time, which is, um, going through, again, at 90 degrees, taking all of those three dimensions with it. Mm-hmm. We go 90 degrees again, which would be the fifth dimension, and you're saying that, or postulating that it is experience, mm. which is the interaction of your life, which is moving through time and through space, but producing something within another dimension. Mm. So if you look at it in terms of patterns, you can see how uh, the interactions begin to play. Because if you... I I go back to that old uh, American Indian saying of, we are here mm. to dream the common dream. Right. Well, how do you interact with others in order to dream the common dream? Because it's more than just being in the same space. Mm. Or the same time. Or the same time. Without any interactions, it's just there you are. You could be a point plotted on a grid, um, just like the trees. <laughs> the trees are plotted on some place in space and they move through time so the interactions how do you interact with another individual except through experience mm. so yes I would I would say you're on the right track with that absolutely I, I think there's another uh, thing I'll throw in there is that it's extremely important now in, in some of our more advanced concepts of the world uh, the quantum world it, the, it's extremely important to have a uh, an observer, and the uh, the importance of the observer can't be overstressed. There are at, at a at a certain at a certain fundamental level, the nature of reality is dependent on observation. So now we say that kind of tritely, and we say, "Oh yes, you know the observer, the observer." But if you think about it a little bit more deeply, you say to yourself, why? I mean, the nature of reality seems, seems it should be fundamental in and of itself. And the, the observer is, is a part of the fabric of reality, therefore doesn't need to be there for it to be real. However, that kind of uh, intuitive concept is, has been proven to be incorrect. And in fact, the correct concept is that the, the, the nature of reality at a fundamental level requires an observer. So where does observation lie? 
it can't lie in the dimensions of reality. Um, there's, a, there's a very fundamental theorem. Uh, I won't state it in great detail, but the fundamental theorem is that to contain a dimension, you must have a higher dimension. Uh, to observe a dimension, you must be within a higher dimension. It, it, it's a very, very interesting, you know, the, the old flatland concept. Uh, flatland was a book that postulated beings that lived in a, dimension, in, in a two-dimensional plane. And within the plane, you couldn't tell, or it was very difficult to tell, um, let's say, a point from a line if it was end-on to you, because you only had that perspective. So there was... Well, well let me just qualify. The plane being like a sheet of paper with absolutely no thickness. Yes, uh, it was like a, an endless sheet of paper. So to see what was actually going on, one had to be outside of the plane, of either above it or below it, just to give, a, give it as a sort of a, a, a simple concept. Being above the plane meant you had to be outside of those two dimensions. You had to be in a third dimension to see it. Well, so the observer in a four-dimensional space-time, I would postulate has to observe, or the, the act of observing is actually a demonstration of the fifth dimension. The fact that, that it has a, a, an effect on the fundamental reality of, the, of space-time means that that observation and therefore the, the um, accrual of experience is operating, or rather it's a, a property of a higher dimension. So, so we, we beings in this four-dimensional space-time who can exercise will, who can exercise observation, because observation is really a, a, a way of, of deciding, a way of choosing, a way of making a choice or exercising will, uh, are, are showing the fact that we have a component within ourselves which is extra-dimensional, extra four-dimensional. Extra it's in a fifth dimension. And not only do we have the ability to observe, but we have the ability to, um, to record, to understand that reality has become different based on observation and remember and have an experience which is now different. We, it's, it's correct to say in a rough way that we are creating reality at a fundamental level by observing it. It gets crazy funky and weird, but the crazy funky weird thing is that in essence you are, you are deciding what the world will be on a moment by moment basis. Yep. By and, and now you mentioned dreaming the common dream. Observation from a you know, when you start to think about it, you say, Well, is there one observer? Yes, you need at least one, but you don't need to only have one. So when you have many, in this case an infinite number of of observers, the common dream is in some ways the sum total of observation within a local area, certainly it is. And the interactions are also a, uh, a macro effect of the, of, the, of the quantum observations, the observations of reality at a fundamental level, which happen every instant, which then shape the, the track of space-time. It, it, it's, it's an interesting and I think maybe um, fruitful way of thinking about things in that we, we are seeing the consequences of having an extra-dimensional component in our beings. It's almost a proof of why you are more than what is around you, what appears to be. Because we, we admit that there is such a thing as time. All right. Try to prove time, and you're just like, people go, what? No, you could see time. You're observing it. Things go from here to there, kind of. So this, in effect, is understanding that it's very similar to that. You are observing something, but you're beginning to notice that there are shifts and changes, and, and there are things happening that there's no logical explanation in your typical four dimensions of why that's happening. So, 
going into a fifth dimension, just like the the in physics they call it spooky action at a distance mm-hmm. when yeah. things are when things are um entangled entangled, and then they go they can be any distance at all from one another it, could, it doesn't matter space time position if one moves the other moves, and it's been proven. Mm. That's the other interesting thing. The, this is not this is not the, uh, theory. It's actually been proven yeah. that uh, this happens. There are experimental data, um, mm-hmm. not just as you mentioned, just not just thought experiments, but actual experiments with real right. with real particles. And um, you know, not to go too deeply into it, but but the fundamentalness of a particle. Uh, it seems to be less dependent on size than we thought of initially because they've been able to entangle thousands of particles or put thousands or hundreds of thousands of, of fundamental particles into a, into a single quantum state. Um, they call Bose-Einstein condensates, which is one of, the, one of these um, sort of large, macro-sized, observable with your bare naked eyes uh, thing which is a quantum object and uh, does things in a, in in a in in a way that uh, mimics or actually is exactly the same as uh, infinitesimally small fundamental particles like a quark or a, or a, a boson. Uh, but these the the special states of reality aren't necessarily confined to the unobservable from the naked eye point of view. Um, or even the instrument, you know, when you when we say we observe something and we see a quantum effect, sometimes people will say, well, that's just a machine is observing it. You're not seeing it. Well, people have actually seen with their own eyes these quantum effects at, in some of these larger, um, you know, cr- these, are, these are hard to create, but people are able to create them and, and then observe that they, they act in the same way. So uh, the So the fifth dimension, you know, this, this idea of a fifth dimension, if we postulate it, say that this is where we are, is where we reside. You know, it's, it, how does it relate to us in, in, a, in, a, in a more human level? It, it's, our, it, it is, it's the way we access it is through our will, our choices. And we almost take for granted that we can make choices about things, that we can manifest things, that we can make things happen, um, that we aren't just a dull piece of matter that's being carried on through the universe second by second by second by second and, and you know, eventually wearing away into nothing. No. The, the part of which, which is extra dimensional or extra space time, and we call it spirit, exists in that sort of a fifth dimension. It isn't, you know, I'll just throw this one in here. We always talk about dark matter, dark energy, and we can't interact with it. Uh, but yet there are effects that we can see. I'm not saying that, that that dark matter doesn't exist in space time it probably does um but but the the fact that you have a, a, a an extra dimensional aspect of human beings which also exists in space time um but yet has the ability to through observation uh literally shape or or determine reality is uh is quite amazing are we still connected to yes okay cuz I, I got a strange message it's probably the fifth dimension calling and, you know we we're telling their secrets and we may not make it through the end of the show <laughs> so, um the 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 idea though here is that from a, from a from a from the point of view of um are we talking to the radio station Yes. Yeah, I can hear you. You can hear me. Everything's fine. Please. Everything's okay. Uh, normal. Wait, wait. There's like a voice from the fifth dimension. Oh. <laughs> okay. No, I had gotten a message saying that we got kicked off. Oh. Hi, Scott. No, everything's operating normally. Okay. I'm not sure what my computer's doing then. All right. Sorry, guys. I told you that they don't want us to tell their secrets. <laughs> so, um, uh, it's, so. From from our point of view, you know, from the point of view of of human beings, um, 
we feel this. We, we, we feel this in a way we understand that we are not just corporeal. We have, we have a spiritual component. We feel this in that we, we, when we interact with each other, uh, there's, there's a more than observable or accountable space-time, um, you know, in, in what we call space-time, way of, of feeling or um, sensing the other. And, and I think entanglement is an interesting concept because as you have a relationship with somebody, don't we sort of say that we're becoming more and more entangled with them? Like you, you become more and more simpatico to, to, the, to the deeper... More entangled. In other words, interwoven. Well, yes, that's what I mean. Entangled. entangled you, you weave... We say this. We say this in our English language. You weave your life together with another. Um, you, you, uh, your shared experience becomes a touchstone where you can, through that person's, through the relationship you have with that other person, you can say things to them that no one else understands, uh, because that you have ex- shared experience. Now, everyone in the world went through the same space time, but they don't have the same experience. And shared experience is the most, is the, is the deepest form of intimacy. Uh, you know. You can be intimate with someone on a physical level, and maybe many people. But but if you, unless you have a long term shared experience with that person, it isn't true intimacy. They don't. What do we say? You don't really know me, and and know me is just an interesting concept because what you do is as you entangle your life with someone, you they build up a a a, a simulacrum, a a sort of a. a a, you know, a portion of their existence, which is their image and knowing of you. And to the extent that, that you know a person, you, you bring them within yourself. You, you make them part of your experience and part of your choices and part of your, um, your spirit becomes entangled with theirs. And it's not on the quantum level, but, it, but there's, some, there's some parallel, there's some analog here to the way particles are, in, are entwined. And, and so when we all have this experience, this is, goes back through all, out all of human history, where something happens to someone you love and you feel it. And there's no, there's no, there's no, you know, scientists say, well, there's no, there's absolutely nothing, nothing true about that. Space time can't happen. But it does happen. And, and it's a, it's, it's well, a. Well, if you see the stories about twins. Twins? Who are completely entangled with one another biologically and soul level. There are many similarities that happen to them throughout their lives, even if they've been separated from birth. So, uh, yeah, it's it's a fascinating uh, look at how are we actually interacting with this place in time. Hmm. I I think there's, there's twins, you know, who have a, a relationship in the womb, and then you have you know people who meet, and over time, well, there's there's a couple of different things to look at. Sometimes you'll meet somebody and you feel like you've known them your whole life. Well, how could that be? In, in your fifth dimensional experience, we can also look at it as being trans time and as being trans physical and corporal cor, cor, corporeal life, um, because the the key is what are you bringing forward? I, I'm going to say. Like, so when people say past lives, what are they bringing forward? They're not bringing forward, you know, their skin color or their their height or their weight. They're bringing forward their experience through time, through life to life, into the into the current incarnation. Well, this this says that your entanglement with your previous self is there, or your or your your continuance throughout. Well, okay, I you know. The way I've always looked at consciousness is not not this serial thing where you die and then you jump into another body and then you die and jump into another body. That's what most people feel that reincarnation is. Okay? Your soul is vast. Mm. As far as I'm concerned, your soul goes trans time and trans levels. Mm. So there are parts of your main consciousness that can incarnate Possibly in two people simultaneously. Mm, that's why you feel like you know that person. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you're saying you're talking about like an oversoul kind of deal. 
consciousness is what I'm talking about. Your consciousness is way past all that. People call it oversoul. Okay, it's been an overused term as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> You know, all I know what Oversoul means is just this bigger group. It's like, no, there are, there are, there's much, much more than that. You know, open, let's open a little bit and understand that you're seeing through a very limited viewpoint, limited, you've got blinders on. If you're lucky, it's just blinders. Mm. You know, some, some people just have this giant mask over their face or a bag over their face. I like to put a bag over some people's faces, but yes, moving on. Moving on. <laughs> moving on. So, when that interaction, well, okay, what what occurs to me? Oh, what occurs to me is um, something we could probably talk about uh, after the break. But the old um, Greek myth of how they looked at the three fates. Mm. Okay, and I've forgotten their names. <laughs> oh, well, their names are good. It's the one who um, measures, the one who cuts, and, and the one who uh, weaves. weaves, yes. Oh, the one who measures, the measures. one who weaves, and then the one who cuts. Yes. Those but three. it's more than measures. It's, it's actually forming the strand that your life is. Spins, then. Yes. And then the one, um, she forms the life, and then it is colored. Yes, that's true. They dye it, yeah. Mm hmm. And then it gets woven. And that's also where the measuring happens. And then it gets cut. This is the end of this life, and now we put. Something else there. So they always looked at life as a tapestry. Yeah. Well, let, let, let's tell you what. Let's let's take our tapestry back to the studio for a little break, and we'll come back and we'll talk more about the fifth dimension. Rick Rodan fans, love mythology with plenty of action and humor? Destroyer's Blood is for you. The new fantasy novel by award-winning author Michael Lines is book one of the adventures of Dev Kalian, the Blood series. Follow Dev and his magic sword betrayer as they are suddenly attacked and forced to return to Olympus to fight in a war they want no part in. The world of men and gods is about to be destroyed by Zeus's ancient foe, and only Dev and Trey can stop him. The conflict never stops, and the amazing twist will have you on the edge of your seat. Act now while the ebook is on sale for only 99 cents. Destroyer's Blood is available on Amazon.com, Barnes & Noble, iTunes, Kobo, and fine e-tailers everywhere. And while you're there, get the free prequel. It's in the blood. Available for a limited time. The Fat Man Gets Out of Bed is the latest book from Michael Lines, the award-winning author of There is a Reaper. Featuring 13 original stories, this wide-ranging collection has everything. Forbidden love, gods versus demigods, weird invading aliens, sexy seductive artificial intelligence, and unusual passion between the living and the dead. All set amidst fantastic worlds of pain and loss and boundless joy. From the sublime to the macabre to the bittersweet, the fat man gets out of bed will leave you breathless with laughter, brimming with tears, trembling with suspense. Available now on Amazon.com, Google Play, iTunes, Kobo, and fine e-tailers everywhere. The Timeless Esoterica Radio Program with Dr. Bruce is broadcast on the fourth Monday of every month at 8 p.m. Pacific, 11 p.m. Eastern, on artistfirst.com. We explore topics including the paranormal, alien life, mysteries, conspiracies, hidden history, oddities, and much more. Each show will feature a special guest with exciting and thought-provoking discussion. Always keep an open mind, an open heart, live forever, and remember Dr. Bruce believes in you.
are listening to The Soul of the Everyman on Artist First World Radio. Back to your hosts, Michael and Margaret Lines. Do not adjust your radio. You mm-hmm. have control. Uh, um, and, and, and welcome back. And, and this is the second half of the top of the bottom of the second half hour. Uh, and we are talking tonight about the fifth dimension. Mm-hmm. And and just we we've, we've kind of gone uh, we kind of gone all over the place, but I think that Margaret, when you brought up at the end of the last half hour, you know the 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 old Greek concept of the fates, and and in that regard, the fates were were um, you know symbols, if you will, of of the Greeks' appreciation of how everybody's life was interwoven, and yet you you had no idea um, you know sort of what would happen in your life. And, and so, to some extent, I agree with that, but there's the, the element of choice was kind of taken away. The fates were, were sort of not choice. They were, your life was faded and nothing you could do would change the way it would come out. Right. I have found the information on them. Uh, the fates were personified as three very old women who spin the threads of human destiny. Their names were Clotho, who would spin the thread, uh, Lachesis, mm. the allotter, measuring, and Atropos, and which says inflexible, which is fascinating. Um, and who these were, they believe they were three, it's Greek mythology, um, they were referred to as the Moirae. Morai? Yes. The Morai, yeah. Morai? Yeah. Or the Fates? Clotho, Lach... 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 Kesis and Atropos were the daughters of Erebus and Nyx. And, um, it, but I think the, 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 the concept of the Greeks was perhaps not what we're talking about as far as the, the choice, but if you, you and I, you brought this up before, and maybe I'll let you. You should make the point again. You know the way a, a thread is woven in the in what looks like the plane of a rug or a tapestry. Right. Um, well, what they represented was uh, the, the cycle of life, birth, life, and death. Uh, they would spin. They would draw out and then cut the thread of life. So if you looked at it in terms of um, the weave of a tapestry, your thread is being woven into that tapestry. And it would be colored uh, and measured by something other than you, as you said. Um, And as the weave goes, the design, uh, the weaver would design the texture of the tapestry, whether or not um, the thread should be longer in order to give it a three-dimensional effect or shorter or tighter. Mm -hmm. So it it, uh, was all up to the weaver to figure out where this thread belongs. And really didn't talk about free will at all. No. Or choices. I mean, that today we, we talk about when, you're, when your destiny is faded, you know. Uh, that, That's probably why all the Greek dramas were all tragedies. Yeah, and everyone dies at the end. Um, but <laughs> now, we're going, now we're going very far afield. But, but, but the, the, the concept, you know, if we look at it today, um, our, you know, when, when they talk about space-time, and especially because time as a dimension is not perceptible to us. But if you could look at it from the fifth dimension, um, we all look like these, these, we all look like threads. We all look like sort of spaghetti in the sense that begin, from the beginning of your life, you're a, um, you know, a, 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 an infant and you, your thread slowly thickens into, you know, your adult form and it continues on and then it peters out at the end and, and, and becomes nothing. Because over, if you look at it from the point of view of, of the fifth dimension, you see all every second of your life is connected to every other second in the right. fifth dimension. Right. So, so, so again, it's, it plays right into our idea of experience because experience is what connects all the seconds of your life together. 
um, when you think of your life, you don't think of it as, as this um, instant by instant, moment by moment series of, of pictures. You think of it as a continuous whole. Now, your, your memory is not eidetic, it's not, not complete, but, but you have this experiential, fifth dimensional component of you which thinks of your life as, as, a, as, a, as a woven thing, as a long sort of, of tube of experience, a long thread of experience, um, and not as, you don't think of, as you sit in your chair and do something, you don't think of the, of the instant before as, as sort of like, oh, that, that, that instant. You think of your whole, what I'm doing, what I did, who I was, where I, where, you know, memory is, is in essence a fifth dimensional thing because it looks at the, 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 the let me put it better. There's no way if you are a four dimensional being to access the second before you can't access it. As you go forward in time, it's irredeemable. It's unaccessible. You are, you are always in the absolute present moment of now and nothing else exists. The universe basically begins every instant from, for something which is in the fourth dimension only. But if you're in the fifth dimension, you can think of the past. You can think of the future, which is to be determined by observation. This is a fifth dimensional operation, which looks at the, at the totality of experience. It can look at the totality of human experience. We, 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 we gather experience from people who have been dead hundreds and thousands of years and bring it into our experiential life as edu- we call it education. But we're talking about things which, which are completely inaccessible in a four dimensional space time. You can't access the past. But experience, we do it effortlessly. We effortlessly live and breathe in the fifth dimension, which is outside of time and space. It, it isn't that we don't experience time. Of course we do. It isn't that we don't experience space. Of course we do. We, we have something more. And then the common dream is us sharing experience, your unique fifth dimensional life and my unique fifth dimensional life intertwine and 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 there are effects on both sides it's still unique it's still one thread for each of us but yet the closer we are entangled the more simpatico the more i say there's there's fifth dimensional connections which then are it don't matter about the space and time that that separate them you can think of somebody who was in your past 50 years ago, and they may be dead and gone, but they're as real and present to you if you bring them up into your experience as though they were still in reality in this instant. Yeah, that replay aspect in your head is is very much uh, accessing your experience or, as you would like to present, the fifth dimension. You are in a fifth dimensional space in order to do this evaluation or review or recall. Yes. And let's talk about life review. We had one show about life review. I mean, you, you come to the end of a four-dimensional experience, space-time. There's no accessing the past, but then if you're, if you're called to give your experience back to the over-soul or to the you, which is eternal, you're giving back a, fifth, you're giving back a segment of fifth-dimensional thing, an experience, back to something which lives entirely in the fifth dimension. It's yeah. t- timeless. The spirit. With spirit. The spirit. No great. time. No space. Right. It's something that lives eternally. And can observe the whole universe. Because the whole, the whole life line. Mm. Your whole life time is taken in in that moment. Yes. So, so, so we are, you know, I, I think that our, our existence is certainly bound and limited to three dimensions and the fourth dimension of time, our existence. The, the moment, we can't get outside of what is happening in the universe. It just goes forward and plowing right along. But our experience is completely fluid. Who, who hasn't had the, um, you go to sleep, 
and you you are almost living in the fifth dimension you your your dream state is is completely without it it, it gets is the, the thread that connects you to the fourth to the four dimensions it's very thin at that point and you fly freely into the fifth dimension in your dream state you bring things from the past and from the future things which are not yet realized things which uh, concepts which didn't seem to come from anywhere in your experience, but they come in because you're connected to the, to the larger um, fifth dimensional experience. Our, when we dream, truly dream in the common dream, we, we go back a little bit. We, 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 you know, the NDE is getting really close to the fifth dimension and then coming back again. You know, it's like really close to leaving the four, the four behind and going back to the fifth entirely. And you, when you're there, you see people who are obviously not living in the present moment, not living in space-time. They've gone on, or, or they're related to you in a way that perhaps they're, they're not even yet realized in, in the flesh, but they're there, and you can see them. That's all fifth dimension. It's a broader existence than what you can remember down here, because once you come back, you really don't remember or unless you've really trained yourself to be able to recall your dream states. Hmm. Um, but there is an, a reason why you're incarnating down here. And you won't actually be able to separate into that fifth dimensional state or, or that heavenly state, that other state, until you're done down here because your your thread is being looped again mm-hmm. and again. And no matter how high you're trying to go, it's being drawn back to be looped again. That's a, that's a nice image. But I, I also think that when people have the NDEs, um, they're getting a taste of, and, and you're right, well, they, it's almost a common um, experience of people who have NDEs is they're told if they come back, obviously, they're told you're, you're, you're not finished yet. You know, this is great. We're happy to see you. Hug, hug, kiss, kiss. Go back. You're not done yet. And, and they go back. And they bring back, what do they bring back? Yet again, more experience. Um, when, when, this is an interesting point because we talked a little bit about it a couple different shows. You know, the, the, the brain... The physical time-bound space-time brain is 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 not functioning during an NDE. Your heart is stopped. There's no blood going. Your your neural activity is almost zero. You're effectively dead. Yet you bring back experience. This is a fifth-dimensional component. It is it is obvious that this hunk of matter is not currently functioning well enough to have experience. It's not even functioning well enough to breathe. Yet the fifth dimensional component, we call it spirit, you can call it whatever you like, is having experiences mm-hmm. which, it, which it can bring back. Well, how do you right. bring them back? You bring them back in the part of you which wasn't bound to time, to space. And in the NDEs, many of them have no brain activity. Zero. Because there's been a lot of talk, oh, well, that's just the last vestiges of whatever. It's like, ah, uh, no. No. no, there's you are more than this matter. Yes. So I think I we had mentioned this before, but you've been each one of us has been given a certain amount of life to live down here, and until you walk through it all, you're not leaving. And uh, the. I think I said this before, the Tibetan monks have always said that if it turns out that your life is cut short, what happens to that bit that you didn't live? And what they say is that that bit gets put into another human body to be played out. And it's usually a very short life. Hmm. I mean, that's... uh, I mean, based on what you were saying before, you know... Are we serially living like like that? But that's it's a lovely and 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 it has a it has the ring of truth component to it because there is an aspect which is certainly each time each incarnation is unique. Each incarnation 
we feel it. We feel that we have a purpose here. We feel very strongly when our purpose is thwarted or frustrated or unable to be um, realized that it, it, it bothers people tremendously. They, they don't like to feel that they're living a purposeless life. No one does. No one does, but when, if, you, if you start feeling that way, you feel horrible. You feel um, depressed. You're like, why, why am I here? I know at the heart level you're saying, I know I'm here for something. You, don't, you maybe can't remember what it was, uh, or you need to become clear about how you can do it, what it is that you, uh, you know, so many... Well, the, the mental part of you and, and mm. the personality wants to gauge on the value of your own life. You know, it's like, this is important, this isn't important, et cetera, et cetera. It's this logical thing, and, and you're not embracing the fact that life itself is so valuable, so very precious, that the smallest thing that you do, you say, or you think, makes an impact that you're not even aware of. Yeah. And, and um, that's, that's a little bit back to what you're saying, the, the common dream, you know, the, the idea of of well, of manifestation, but also of the, 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 I don't know if they're called, if it would say corona, the ripple effects of, of your fifth dimensional existence are, are vast. You know, when you, when you are here, your mental aspect says, well, you know, nobody's given me the, the sheet of instructions of what I'm supposed to do, you know, A, B, C, D. No, but, but, if, but if you just follow your heart, follow your bliss, you will find that the ripple effects you may never understand why you did a certain thing or met a certain person or didn't meet a certain person. Uh, but yet, from the, from the fifth dimensional aspect, all of it's clear. You can see that, that, that the, the, the past and the future are one. You can see all the things, all the ripples are quite apparent from outside. And the part of you which still has that connection can perceive. I, I would postulate that the heart is has has the uh, the eyes of the fifth dimension, the eyes of the experiential part of you that can judge when something we say it has heart. But we say that if you're following your heart, if you're following your bliss, you're you're in your purpose because you're not using the space time bound mind. The mind is space time bound, but the heart is not. The heart connects to all your experience. It understands both the now and the eternal, and not just the, you know, the da 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 uh, It's funny that the now and the eternal are almost identical. You know, the now is an eternal moment, but it also is ephemeral. And the heart understands both those things at the same time. It's, a, it's the duality of the heart that understands now, and it understands ever, forever. Yeah, uh, the duality is the heart do, does understand if you allow it, if you allow yourself to hear it. And the uh, singularity or the single point of now, which is all, is eternity mm. or forever. And what we define as eternity or forever, no bounds, all the same, just the expansion is different. Yep. Yep. And which is an interesting point. Oh, again, these are, you know, eternity and the now being the same are, they're the same in the fifth dimension. Um, if you, there, was, there was one of the shows, I think you were watching it with me, where they were talking about, you know, the universe, which was, uh, let's say, born 14 billion years ago and, and some ridiculous amount of years from now, as we measure years, will come to its ultimate heat death. And um, the, there's a very famous physicist, his name is Roger Penrose, who has postulated that those two, those two moments are exactly identical, that the beginning of the universe, when it is formless and nothing and, and a singularity, is exactly identical to the end of the universe, where it is completely dissolute 
because from from the fifth dimension, from the outside looking in, those two are exactly the same size. They're dimensionless. Mm. And that the next universe's Big Bang comes from the last universe's last gas because it become the, the, all the energy that was put into the nothingness of heat death is still there and then bangs again. So the the interesting thing about that is none of that happens. People, physicists, real physicists with real degrees from real universities talk about what happened before the Big Bang. It used to be de rigueur that nothing could happen before the Big Bang. Even time couldn't happen. But it's all true because the Big Bang occurs within something. It occurs within the fifth dimension. It occurs, it has to occur in a higher dimension, or it, frankly, it can't occur. Things, events which are out, which create the dimension you're in have to occur in a higher dimension. It seems to make sense, and it actually does. You can't make something happen in two dimensions unless you have a third dimension with which to take it out of and put it into the second, the two-dimensional thing. So we, the fourth-dimensional thing that is the universe, occurs in a higher dimension. This is, this is actually quite logical, mathematical theory. And I won't even go into the math because I can't do it. Only Margaret can do that math. No, but no, no. Don't let her fool you. She's Stop. a stone-cold stone genius. Stop. But, but the fifth dimension has to exist. You can, you can almost say it has to for our four dimensions to exist within it. Space and time, uh, being what they are, must uh, reside in a higher dimension, even if it's completely inaccessible, but it's not. We access the higher dimension through our interaction with it, through the fact that we are part of it, incarnated here with will and choice and purpose because none of the rest of the space-time universe ha- these are foreign concepts to the rest of the universe will choice purpose i'm an atom i got none of those things i got i've got nothing forgot <laughs> but 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 a certain collection of atoms with a connection to the fifth dimension has these things we, we quite casually say i'm going to do something today i'm going to decide what to do and the universe goes okay let's try to make that happen <laughs> because somebody's deciding and, and making me do things. Well, yeah, because you can't do that without the extra dimensional component. It, it's not possible. True. This is true. It's, it's, it's very, what's the word? To embrace the fact that you are more and what you appear to be mm. is something that you actually have to experience the life down here first before you can come to that conclusion. You know, children in general, they, they run through it all. Well, you know, just playing. Like, yay, time to play. And then we think we, we need to structure things and it's usually because you want to uh, be able to eat and sleep and feed the kids. <laughs> <laughs> but as you go on to that question of, you know, why, why am I here, comes in. So if you are capable of expanding yourself out and realizing, accepting, that there's more to life than what you've you've been seeing. Mm. And there's a whole another world to experience. That therein lies that jump. Because if you don't make that leap, you feel very trapped. Mm. I would say that that there's an intuitive understanding of it, and then there's a um, sort of a uh, integrated understanding of it, which you come to later. You start to be introspective. Is I believe your ability to um, access the fifth, fifth dimension is innate. 
but your ability to think about accessing the fifth dimension, to kind of introspect on what you're doing, is something which you can come to. You have to get more words and more, more concepts. But more perspective. More perspective. But the innate nature of incarnation and experience is, is part of, of what we are. We're not, as, as we've said already, we're not just the matter flowing through the universe and a second per second all the time. Yes, all that stuff is really cool, but you have to add a fifth dimensional chooser, a fifth dimensional observer in order to, to bring it into what we call the interactive reality. You know, things where things get, where, where the rubber meets the road, where manifestation happens, is, is in the observer and what it observes. The experiencer and the shared experience. Uh, these these concepts are so so innate to us that we don't even think about them. Right. But but yet, if you think about if you start to introspect and you go, "Wow, oh, that's crazy nuts!" That you have to observe. <laughs> that you have to observe things. It's crazy nuts that you can think about the past and think about the future because a tree doesn't do those things. Rocks don't do those things. They just exist. Existence is cool. The universe existing is cool. But thinking about the universe existing is like crazy nuts. <laughs> well, hum- humans are the only species that can think in terms of distant future or, or, or distant, distant past. Distant past. The, 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 the amazing ability which is innate and which you see manifested in, in the earliest of human cultures, the idea of connection to spirit, of, of an extra physical component, is, is part of what makes us what we are, something which comes from outside the universe and then returns to it. Can you imagine just for a moment that you are that eternal being just out there and suddenly you have an opportunity to, to be here? which means that you're going from multidimensional existence down to five because you want to be able to, ex- to expand into that, to have the experience of expanding into that consciousness, that fifth dimension. So you're going into the one, two, three, and then time, and then interaction. Mm. Fascinating thought. Do you, you're, you're agreeing to do this. Choosing. Mm-hmm. So, so the fifth dimension, the currency is choice. The currency is free will. And the importance of it can't be understated. We are fifth dimensional beings living in a universe which is being held in a fifth dimensional. It occurs in a fifth dimensional, um, in a fifth dimensional world, a fifth, fifth dimensional thing which we can't really perceive, but we are a part of it. Yes, this is a, this we are in living in this construct, and I believe we have reached the end of our show. It was quite an experience, wasn't it? Mm. <laughs> and I'm Margaret, and and I'm Michael, and this has been the Soul of the Everyman. Thanks for listening. Mm-hmm.